I had never bought anything off of eBay before, but I was in a phase where I could reminisces of all of all of the old TV shows I grew up on. So I began scouring the internet for certain things that would give me the nostalgic feeling. I happened to stumble upon a user who was selling an unreleased episode of an old show that aired on the Family Channel called The Weekenders on a CD for $7. I was slightly curious about the low price, but I just figured that because he didn't want it. I am a television enthusiast, so this was an exciting moment for me. Being able to see an episode that hadn't been on released or seen by anywhere else than the person who was selling it. I would watch it I was when I was 11 or so every day in the morning before school. The disc finally arrived and when it came in one of those blank CD cases, I, so I was hoping I didn't get gypped. The disc had a label on it, written in black letters on somewhat of a worn white label. Kind of brown tinge. It said dismissed. I thought in my head that could be unreleased. That must have been dismissed, so I didn't give out much thought about it. It was getting dark outside of my living room and had dark blue hue to it as the sun was almost down. My parents were at work and my brother asleep. I popped the disc into the DVD player on my TV and waited. The player usually quite worked quickly and surprised me that it didn't start too quickly. Well, the disc was $7, so you get what you paid for. I was sitting on my couch directly in front of the TV, just looking at the blank screen. It faded to a frame that it was only for a brief moment. I thought I'd missed something, so I rewinded it back to the scene and paused. It was the Bahia Bay Day News Lady with the headline covered in a black box and a blurry picture of what looked like a blue and red object in a plastic bag. Next to the yellow card had an X on it. I felt rather puzzled by what I was looking at, but I had to proceed to watch the rest. The theme song played as normal. I felt a sense of nostalgia hit me as I saw the characters' name cards appear up Carver, Lore, Tish, and I was shocked that Tino's name was missing. Three of the characters danced in front of the title card without Tino. I figured this was why the episode was pulled, a mishap of the artists or something. The word Friday came up on the screen and I saw the four characters, including Tino, walking across the beach backdrop. They were talking about Chloe Monte's latest in incident, a fridge magnet stuck in her braces, and the characters had a good laugh. I, my living room was completely dark by now, and I was relaxed onto my couch. I watched on as they went to the mall and by a costume store. They all went and showed Lori and Turret Tish trying to find the looking hats that they like. Tina was walking up in the aisle looking at the capes. He was feeling the material in one particular. I wasn't too indulged to not even notice Carver sneaking up behind him. Carver then jumped out at Tino, wearing a clown mask with the black paint and around the eyes, a big red nose and a smile. Tino then jumped out of his skin and fell to the floor, her in a fetal position, as assumed. They all laughed at his reaction, just looking at him. The shot panned to Tino's face, and eyes closed as a tear ran down, tear ran down his cheek sobbing under his breath, and he and his friends just continued to laugh. He then hopped up and ran. I found this unusual, because I was outraged that they would laugh at him while he was in tears. As Tino ran, the sky turned grayer and darker, running home with tears running down his face. This seemed to be very grim for a Weekenders episode. He opened the door to his house. The lights weren't on, but he could see his mom passed out on the couch. As he walked over to her, and as he touched her shoulder to see his mother's face, a deafening scream took over my speakers. I scrambled frantically to turn down the volume. The image had become very detailed. His mother was deceased, blood running down from the gash in her cheek. Her eyes were popped out of her head, almost looking as if they were staring at the viewer. Her hair was frazzled and discolored. Tino then backed off away as his mother's body fell violently at his feet. I was clutching onto my couch cushion. Tino then ran upstairs and slammed his door, then sat with his back to it. The TV went silent. At first I thought I accidentally hit the mute button, but the volume was up. 
Tino sat quietly at the door, staring at the wall for about three minutes. He then stood up and walked over to his dresser. There was a pill bottle, and he tossed it at the wall violently before taking off his shirt. He opened up the drawer to find a blue knife in a green box. He looked at the mirror as he slammed it on the table. He broke the fourth wall by staring into the camera. Kind of an unusual twist for this unusual episode. He stared at me for a good minute and a half, a blank stare, not blinking. His eyes widened, and what looked like almost if a smile that crept onto his face walked closer and said, You want me to do it, don't you? Very loudly, it sounded so real, like he was sitting next to me, yelling into my ear. Here, he smiled at me for a moment as he flicked the knife and put it to his face. I was dumbfounded by the fear. I couldn't move. He dug the blade into his eyelid as the dark red liquid ran down his face. His screams were high-pitched and nothing like I've heard before. He dug the blade into the eyelids and the liquids ran down his face and onto his chest. He screamed once again as he dug it into his nose. I could hear the blade going in and proceeded to cut out the sides of his mouth. The effects of this show seemed greater more realistic than before. I watched as the blood pouring down his face formed the face of a clown. His blonde hair was soaked in blood. He ran out of the room laughing and putting his hands on his face. He then fell to the ground. A lot of blood was coming out of his nose and he fell to the so his head rested on the step up of his bed. The floor had been a puddle of blood on it. It went quiet until he turned to the camera once again. Tino lifted his head slightly as his eyes stared down. He said with his voice now muffled by the blood, later days, as his head hit the step with blood rushing down everywhere, his eyes were still open, a grin on his blood-soaked face. He was staring at me and was waiting for the credits to roll, but they never came. I went to turn it off and go back to the menu. I tried pressing the menu button, but it didn't work. He was staring down at me as blood rushed from his skull to the floor. As I stood up to turn off the TV, my entire room was black. I was sweating like crazy, frantically trying to find a light. I turned it on and started at my TV, still off. I unplugged the DVD player and took it off to the side. And then I turned the TV back on again to see the same face. Tino, wide-eyed and deceased, now having dry blood on his face, cracking. I felt tears in the back of my eyes for some reason. As I turned it off again, I unplugged the TV and sat in silence as I waited for my dad to get home. I started having nightmares after I saw it, and then since then, I had visit therapy. To this day, I don't know what happened, but for some reason, every time I turn on the TV, I see his face. No one else seems to see it but me, but I always see it. I always see it.